I'm Dr. Moyes and I'm the program lead for a new MSc course that we're setting up in the microbiome in health and disease. So this is a new one-year full-time MSc course that we're initiating. So the first question here if we're talking about an MSc course in the microbiome is what is the microbiome? Well, at its most simple, the microbiome is the entire sum of microbes that are present on or within a particular environment. So in our case, we're interested in what is present within the human body. So that includes microbes that are in the gut, microbes that are in the mouth, on the skin, within the respiratory tract, everywhere. Why is this of interest? Well, if we take a little bit of a look back through genome research, DNA research through time, then we can see that there's a, a whole history of, of various different things going on here until we get to the early 90s when we initiate the Human Genome Project, which was an effort to try and sequence and categorize the human genome. And this was a project which is then going to result in basically identifying how diseases occurred and curing most diseases. As a result of this project, we, had, we sequenced around 3.16 gigabases, so that's two and a half meters worth of DNA in every single cell in the body. Now in the fruit fly, which is a much smaller organism than us, we know that there are around 14,000 genes. In chickens, we know there are around 23,000 genes. And in corn, a plant, we know there are around 59,000 genes. So because of this, we expected that there were going to be in the region of probably around 100,000 genes in the human genome. That was the expectation going in, given the amount of DNA that was there and given the complexity of the human organism. We got a big shock when we found out that the actual number at the time was predicted to be 25,000, and now it's probably closer to around 23,000. So the number of genes that we were expecting in the human body and the human genome was much less than was, or was much greater than the, the number that we actually found there. We then find other things as we start to look at the microbiology of things. If we count the number of cells in the human body and then the number of microbes in the human body, we find that there's a dichotomy of around 10 to 1. So there are 10 times as many microbes in the human body as there are human cells there. So from that point of view, we're outnumbered by the number of microbial cells. And if we look at the number of genes, which are the actual functional units here. This is what's actually defining what we are and what we do. We find that it's even more wide-ranging. So rather than the 23,000 genes that we have in the human genome, there are over 9 million genes purely in the gut from microbes. So we can see that there's a massive diversity of genes within the gut. And these things are going to be doing, these genes are going to be coding for a variety of different things and a variety of different factors, some of which are factors that we need for growth, so to do with metabolism, processing of dietary products and things like that. Others of which are going to be causing release of toxins, which are going to be causing disease. And others still are going to be releasing things like antibiotics or antibiotic resistance, all of which are affecting how we live, how we cope and how we survive. And because of this, there's a major initiative now underway to try and determine what the microbes are that are in the gut and what the genes are, and more importantly, how we interact with these genes and how these genes interact with us and affect us. And the things that these genes can affect us over are hugely diverse, ranging from the quite frankly ridiculous and is it really that important in terms of the shape of a poo, right the way up to something more important, such as whether we're going to become obese or whether we're going to develop type 2 diabetes or whether we'll have Crohn's disease, or more recently, whether we'll develop Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's. So together, these microbial genes provide traits that we've not evolved naturally. So in other words, we have not had to evolve the various different things that these genes do because the microbes have done it instead. And so we now live in a symbiotic relationship with these microbes. And these microbes are therefore forming a, an important part of our homeostasis, and that's how they can impact on us, and that's how they can affect us. So this has led to the idea now that rather than us being a discrete organism that's made up of mammalian cells and that's it, what we actually are is something called a superorganism or a hollow organism, which means that we are more than just the human cells, we are the human cells and the microbial cells together. So once again, this interaction between microbial cells and human cells becomes important. The big question though is how do we analyze this? So all this microbial research, this microbiome research has now come out through the development of next generation sequencing. So we are now able to sit there and perform sequencing, extract DNA from various different samples, such as a stool sample or a saliva sample, 
extract the DNA from it, and then sequence it. And when we sequence it, we're then getting around 20 to between 20 and 40 million different sequence reads that we're getting, which we then need to assemble somehow and to then compare to databases that we've got of known genes to then define what genes are present, what microbes are present. And then we can look at how they're being upregulated or downregulated by looking at RNA. We can have a look to see what the effects of that are in terms of proteins being produced or in terms of metabolites being produced. And this then brings us into the world of multiomics data. Huge amounts of data, huge data sets, terabytes of data, which we need to analyze somehow. And so this then leads to the development of computational techniques that we're now using. And so we have a whole variety of computational techniques that we now use to try and analyze this data. And so one of the things that this course will be teaching is how to analyze this data and how to integrate the various different data sets together from different sources to try and make sense out of what we're seeing. To give you an example of the complexity that we see, this is what we currently know about the human genome, about the human microbiome even. And we can see here that on each of the rings, each of those different colors is relating to a different body site. And each of them coming out there is a different microbial family or a different microbial species. And so we can see that the different body sites all have different microbes growing on them, which are then going to have different impacts and different problems associated with them. So if we think about something simple like dandruff, that's associated with a fungus called malassezia. So we see more malassezia appearing in patients that have, or people that have dandruff. Equally, we see more appearance of a bacterium called Staphylococcus aureus in people that have dermatitis or eczema. Or in the case of people that have type 2 diabetes or people that have obesity, we see other organisms increasing. All of this is impacting on how we grow, how we develop, and how we age. And so knowing what the microbes are, knowing what the microbes produce, we're then able to make more informed guesses and more informed research into how these diseases develop, and more importantly, how we can treat them. Because by interfering or by modulating the microbes that are there, or by the modulating the products that they produce, we can then have a big impact on how we develop as a host and how we survive. So what is the course that we're talking about? So this is a new course, as we said, that we're setting up. And it's providing a comprehensive ed education into microbiome, and not just the history and the theory behind microbiome, but also how we analyze microbiome and how we interpret the information that we get from there in the context of both health and disease. So we're taking that basic understanding of the microbiology that we're looking into there, but we're also looking at modern detection techniques. So how it is that we actually go about doing it. So the new next generation sequencing techniques that are now becoming more and more common, more and more prevalent in a variety of different fields. We're then also looking at how you analyze that data and how you combine that data with other data, such as metabolomes, such as proteomes. So all these sort of proteins, all these metabolites, the DNA, the RNA, the whole lot together and how it all integrates together and how modifications to DNA or modifications to proteins can have an impact and how we can use computational techniques to do that. And more importantly, once we've then analyzed that data, how you can then apply that to the clinical setting to then make predictions either in the clinical setting or even in the agricultural setting or in the environmental setting to then make predictions and to develop new treatments, new cures, new therapies or whatever other type of treatment we care to, to look at. The people that will be delivering this research, or the, the, the course itself, are top researchers in the field. So they're people like myself and people like the co-program lead, Dr. Said, uh, Dr. Shai, who is going to be sitting there providing the computational analysis. So we, we're providing a large amount of computational analysis, a large amount of microbiology analysis, so in understanding of the basic microbiology of what's going on there in the metabolism, but also understanding the computational techniques and the modeling techniques that we can use to make these predictions. We will also be incorporating other scientists from a variety of different sites, both from within King's itself, but also some of the top researchers from Europe, predominantly from the SciLife Lab, which is the Swedish equivalent of the Crick Institute in London, if any of you have heard of the Crick Institute. It will also be incorporating people from the European Bioinformatics Institute, uh, based up at Cambridge, and people from other laboratories from around Europe. As well as the straightforward lectures, it also involves tutorials, and it involves a lot of work in workshops, 
working with computers, manipulating data, and learning how to use this. And this will prepare you both for a further future PhD, if that's the way you wish to go, or for working in the laboratory yourself, or even for going to work in industry, providing you with the skills in data analysis and interpretation that they are crying out for currently in various different industries. So it comprises of four taught modules, one of which in basic microbiology, one of which in dysbiosis. So those are the two factual uh, modules and two computational modules in there, one of which is the basic analysis of the various different omics data sets. And the other is to then take those omics data sets and start modeling it and start predicting it and start integrating them. And that's a systems biology and synthetic biology module where we're incorporating those data together to say, how do you go from this is what we've got to this is how it's doing things and making predictions in silico. The final part of the, of the course is a fifth module, which is a research project, which takes place over six months in the second half of the course. And within this module, that we will be a variety of different research projects that you can pick, some of which will be based here at King's, but there will also be the option to take projects which are based either in the Karolinska Institute in Sweden within the Silof Lab, or also to take some which are based with industry. So at the moment we have uh, an understanding with Unilever to provide courses there, and there are other companies as well which are coming on board. So that one of the strong parts of this course is an industrial component as well. So being able to go out into industry and to use your skills in industry and to make those contacts within industry should you wish to pursue a career within industry. The assessment for the course will be based on coursework in terms of written essays and written reports. It will be based around analysis of data as well. So one of the things that we will be doing will be giving you a, a set of data which you will then analyze yourself within the, within the, the com computational modules to then develop those skills and target those skills as you're coming through. There will also be oral and uh, poster presentations to develop your ability to present that data to a wide audience, both scientific and lay. And then finally, for the research project, this will involve producing a research proposal which will teach you about writing grant applications and funding applications. And then finally, a dissertation and an oral presentation which will enable you to develop those skills as to how to present your data in terms of written form for publication and for theses and for presenting it to a wider audience at scientific conferences. So what sort of people are we thinking about for this course? Well, we're aiming this course at a wide variety of people, both biologists and mathematicians and, com and computer scientists. As we said, there's a large computational component to the course. Now, computational biology is something which is coming in more and more into all disciplines within research in biology and within biomedicine. So we're teaching skills, although the skills here will be targeted specifically at analyzing data for microbiome, you will also be able to use these skills for, present, or for analyzing data that's coming from a variety of different settings as well as the microbiome setting. And so we're looking at both aiming it towards biologists and biomedical people, but also towards people coming from a mathematical background or from an engineering or from a more physical sciences background, a computational background. We have people working within microbiome field who are both biologists and computational biologists. So not being a biologist is not a hindrance to this course. So with that, I'll stop, and if anybody has any questions, I'll take some questions.